All right, guys, back on Southeastern 14 with Max Barr, and we are sharing our reaction to the weekend action in SEC basketball. I know lots of you were watching SEC football. Um, a, a very good weekend for uh, the league and, and bowl action, which you can check out the reaction video that Chris and Blaine did on that on the channel. But we're here to talk basketball. And before we do that, let's tell you about our friends at Bet Online. The only people uh, that don't get this time of year off are pro athletes. Myself and Max Barr and our friends at Bet Online um, because they have everything you need if you want to get in on the betting action. NFL ball season, NBA in full swing uh, over the holidays, of course. And so uh, Bet Online not taking a second off to make sure you have all the odds, news, and info that you need. Um, so, you know, again, with, with info available, desktop, mobile access, you can get it anywhere you need it. Um, all the sports wagering info to bet on these games uh, that we talk about, any other games you want to bet on. You can do that by heading over to Bet Online to get in on the action. Remember, use that promo code Believe B L E A V to receive your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Max, we did our preview for the weekend slates, and we started with two games in particular. Let's start with those two uh, in the reaction because I think uh, you know certainly. And here's the thing, right? I told you, I said somebody's going to lose one of these games. It's just the way it works every year. The holidays. Somebody's going to lose one of these things. Um, they didn't. The SEC did very well uh, in terms of taking care of their business against teams they should have taken care of business against. But there were two teams, Alabama, Arkansas, I think had a little bit tougher competition. Alabama, 101-56 over Ooh. Liberty. Um, a 45-point victory. And I think this sort of accentuated everything I've said about Alabama. They are the type of team. And remember, Liberty's not a bad team. Anybody can say what they want. You know, I know they lost lost by 45. That's not a bad team. But the problem is when you play Alabama, this is what you get. You are going to get some games where they are just going to run people out of the gym based on how good they are offensively. And I think this hammered that home. Yes, they also played some good defense here, right? Their defensive numbers improved significantly after, you know, holding a Liberty team that's been pretty efficient offensively, pretty good offensively to just 56 points. But the difference is always to me is just when Alabama gets going offensively, there's only so much you can do. And 14 of 28 from three, they get to the free throw line 20 times. They only turn it over eight times against this Liberty defense, you know, the pack line, all that. I mean, this is, this is why I'm high on Alabama entering SEC play is because you see what they're capable of when they go off. And I don't think this is the last time we're going to see Alabama just steamroll someone um, just because of how good they can be offensively. Blake, you've been all over Alabama lately. You've been saying, watch out for these guys. They're better than their record. Um, and I think you kind of saw that come to fruition in this one. Guys, this Liberty team was picked preseason to win the to win Conference USA. And Richie McKay has been there year after year with consistency, right? This is a very good program into just go in and just just crush them like that is is very impressive this isn't just some scrap you know some mid-major that you scrap on the schedule this is a good team uh that we if you watch the preview we were you know the spread was nine you know this was this had all the makings of a sneaky game in the holidays that can come and bite you down the road nope not here i mean oh my gosh sometimes it's just your night it was it was Latrell Wrightsell's night, you know, five or seven from three. The guy was just just unbelievable on fire. But I'm more impressed with Aaron Estrada, okay, and because we were a few videos ago, we were talking like ah, oh, like Estrada just kind of he looks like he doesn't really know what his role is right now in this offense. You know, Sears is it was right after Sears had that crazy game against Purdue, and Estrada just kind of looked a little bit lost. Not in this one. Two assists away from a triple-double. Add on four steals also. That's a huge confidence boost for, for Estrada coming into coming into conference play. So, I mean, there, there's not a single bad thing you can say about this performance. Crushed the boards. Shot the lights out. I mean, man, if, if, if Oates has this defense really turning the corner, the, Alabama's going to start catching up to what the analytics have them at here pretty soon. Uh, this was big. Yeah, the analytics love them. Um, yeah. <clears throat> they're they're top five in Ken Palm right now. <laughs> Again, with five losses. Like, I don't I, I no. have to believe that is 
it's the quickest ever for five losses. I was gonna say it's gotta be like there's there's yeah. no chance I can see elsewhere. Um, so again, I, I would just keep that in mind with Alabama. Everybody can point to the loss column and say they have five, but I'm just telling you that it would not be surprising to see this team win the SEC potentially um, and get out of SEC play with fewer than five losses. I, I think that is a realistic possibility just based on how they play. If everything's going well offensively, defensively, they're getting better. They're still not going to be perfect. Um, and so maybe that winds up being the difference in some of these games because, you know, looking at their schedule, they play Tennessee twice. They play Auburn twice. Um, trying to see who else they played Florida twice. Mississippi State twice. Um, you know, you only get Kentucky once. You only get Arkansas once. Um, so yeah, just kind of going through this, they get A and M once. So I don't think it's a terrible setup in terms of the schedule uh, necessarily. So we'll see what happens with Alabama, but a huge win uh, over Liberty in that one. All right, speaking of Arkansas, those two teams will meet uh, the regular season uh, finale for both on March the 9th. But uh, Arkansas. Gets a much needed 106 to 90 win over UNC Wilmington. That's three in a row for the Hogs now. But this one to me, Max, felt a little bit more like Arkansas. This felt a little bit more like the team that, you know, we wanted to see. And, you know, it, it's one of those things where, as we've said, it's just a matter of seeing different guys step up and make plays. Well, what do you know? Keon Minifield comes in, scores 32 points here. So his third game. He's played for the team this season. Two points, 11 points, now 32. Just an outburst. Gets to the free throw line 17 times in this game. Um, but the bigger story, I thought, beyond that, I mean, that's a, that's the big story. But Arkansas only turns the ball over eight times. Their guard play looked very good. Devo, six assists, one turnover. Five guys in double figures with Jalen Graham coming off the bench and scoring 16, which I feel like, We've said all like it's one of those things where you're going to get these kind of games from Jalen Graham. You may not get it every single game, uh, but you see his minutes have been more consistent recently. Um, so clearly, Muss is trying some things there and feeling like there's maybe a confidence in what he can do. Um, everybody else, it was kind of all over the place, right? I mean, Battle plays what seven minutes in this game. Uh, Muss played essentially. I mean, he kind of went with five guys. Like, I mean, really, if you really look at it, like when you watch this game play out, everybody else got their minutes, but what Ellis got 10, everybody else, Jalen Graham, Tremont Mark, Trevin Brazil, Minifield, Davis, all go 24 or more minutes with Davis, Minifield, Brazil, all going 33 or more minutes. So like, this is somewhat similar to what we've seen in years past where like last year, if you looked at the stats, I don't remember the, who exactly it was, but it was like, you had the three, if you look at the top yeah. five, 10 minutes guys in the SEC, there were three Arkansas guys in the top five because you had three guys playing 35 or more minutes. I think it was Davis. Uh, why am I? I've got to look this up. Black. It's going to bother me. Black. And was it um, who? Why am I? Ricky Council. Had to be Ricky yep, Council, Council, right? So, yeah. I mean, so it's just one of those things where, yeah. I don't know. Like, as we said, you remember UNC Wilmington beat Kentucky. This felt like a pretty good Arkansas performance here. Um, I'm not saying they fixed everything, but I really liked what I saw from the Hogs in this game. And <laughs> I think we may have said this too. They get to the free throw line 43 times in this game. This was a vintage SEC basketball game where you had 77 free throw shot between these two teams. You're going to see more of that in SEC play, I'm telling you. Yeah, the, I, was, I was just going to bring that up. Watching this game, the, the free throws were ridiculous. But... I mean, hey, let's start with the positives. Big win, right? Needed this, needed this coming in. Um, I'm first of all, I'm just I'm impressed by by Wilmington. And in in, I mean, they play like eight, nine guys, and none of them are taller than I think they got one guy above six, seven, maybe. Um, and 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 they fight, man. They fight. So um, what you know, good win nonetheless. But we said in the preview, we said Devo Davis and his offense has kind of just been non-existent. And then, boom, he has his best offensive night of the year, three threes. And when you're making shots, you're just playing harder. You know, six assists, three steals, and only one turnover. That's exactly the game. That's what that's what you need from Devo Davis, just here on out. This is the type of game you need from him. Um, there's a little bit of, you know – concern over the you know the defense you know you let up 90 um you let up 15 offensive rebounds so you know still some stuff to clean up uh but hey 
you needed this win and you got it. You know, that's that's first and foremost. Um, just like moving forward with this Arkansas team, I don't know how to to break them down and analyze them because I don't know who's getting minutes. No. Uh, back-to-back games under five minutes for Davenport. Lawson gets nine minutes after last game. He got 25 minutes. Jalen Graham has his season high of 27 after his previous season high was 16 minutes. I just, I have no clue who's going to be out there on the floor for Arkansas game to game. Uh, but I'll tell you what, you know, one person that is going to be out there is Menafield uh, because I think he, we were talking a few weeks ago about how we think Layden Blocker has started to take the point guard position away from Al Ellis. Well, I think it's squared away now. You got your point guard for the rest of the season here in, in K.M. Menafield. So step in the right direction. Let's we'll say that, Blake. Yeah, I, I think you brought up an important point. Look, the defense is still not there, but I think you can start to see that there are some wheels turning in the yep. must bus in, in the mind of the must bus, because I think he's starting to see, all right, maybe I figured out not everything. And like we said, the menace distribution is still all over the place. Um, but I think he's starting to realize who his guys are like yep. that he's going to be able to turn to when he needs those key plays. And he's going to be starting to, I think, figure out the right buttons. Um, it's just, yeah, it, it's still a work in progress. Don't want to get too over the top, but exactly. I thought this was a, a good win. And remember they open sec play at home against Auburn, which would be a great opportunity to start things off. Um, Huge. you know, uh, yeah, on the right foot against a really good Auburn team. So, Yep, good one for the Hogs, and uh, we'll see if this kind of is kind of a launching point maybe for them to to really start to figure some things out. So, um, all right, now let's just kind of go across the board here. Like we're going to do this like we did last time. Those were kind of the key games, um, but everybody else won on Saturday, Max. And I guess you know I'll run through the scores here just on the Saturday games. We'll we'll touch on the Sunday games in a second because um, there was a significant development in those, which we kind of previewed, but. Florida 97, Quinnipiac 72, South Carolina 94, Florida A&M 62, Georgia 93, Alabama A&M 73, uh, Missouri 92, Central Arkansas 59, which, by the way, I'm watching that game earlier. I'm like, uh-oh, like this thing's going to wind up being closed, and Missouri just runs away with it. Um, Vanderbilt 69, Dartmouth 53, same thing on that one. Uh, I think Dartmouth got off to a, a decent start there. But A&M 79, Prairie View 56, and Auburn 101, Chattanooga 66. I mean – my goodness, it's like we don't usually we haven't gotten many of these this year where the SEC just goes out and dominates teams like just everybody won convincingly here. So I guess the, the biggest question is what stood out the most for you from this sort of pack of games? Well, first off, welcome back, Tyrese Radford. Great yeah. to see him back on the court. Yeah, he just he changes this team. Yeah, you almost forget what he's like out there when you don't see him for game after game and you're like, all right, I guess this is Texas A&M now. And then Radford plays and you're just like, oh man, they were missing that. Oh man, they were missing that. Um, first game since the 10th of December, 20 minutes. So he's healthy. 11.7 rebounds, three assists, a block, no turnovers. I mean, come on. You can't tell me they weren't missing him badly. You know, yeah. is, is that Houston result different if Tyrese Radford is playing? In my opinion, it, it probably is. Um, so just huge development. Hopefully he's back for good now, right? Because we saw him come back and then have a few more games out. So hopefully we get uh, a Tyrese Radford back and that's kind of the trend here with, with the SEC teams getting healthy now. Um, Auburn just crushed Chattanooga, just crushed them. Plus 23 on the glass. Broom and Cardwell had seven blocks. I mean, geez. We put out a uh, we put out a tweet about the top fifteen individual scores in the SEC, and the Auburn didn't have one. That's how balanced they are. Just unbelievable balance on this team. I think they're gonna they got to be ranked here coming up this next AP poll. Got to be. Sure. I don't yeah. I don't know how they wouldn't be. Um, but then moving up, uh, Vandy, good result. We got a good result out of Vandy. There we go. Uh, this was my takeaway. Lawrence, sixteen field goal attempts. Manion, 17 field goal attempts. They combined for 45. That's got to be every game for What here did we out. say? We said this. We said this is the only way they're going to be. Only way. Like it, it has to be. They they have to be on every game. And even then, like, it really wasn't pretty. Like, if you watch that game, it was not oh, no. pretty. Um, But, like, 
I that is the pressure that this team is going to have moving forward is like it has to be on them. And that's going to be a lot of pressure when you start to play better teams. Um, but yes, I just wanted to, to point that. I remember they started against Alabama at home on Saturday. So those two are going to have to go for 30 each. Oh, so, yeah, maybe more. Yeah. But <clears throat> hey, at least you, you have the blueprint. The blueprint is laid for Vandy. Um, Missouri and Florida both beat the brakes off their opponents. Same with South Carolina. Um, I will say with South Carolina, um, Colin Murray Boyles, back-to-back games in double digits. Looks like he's finally getting comfortable. Um, just another wing piece, another body for for South Carolina. Um, just proving to be talented, proving to have depth. I think they're for real. Uh, we're going to find out here pretty soon. But uh, I did want to know on, I think it was Friday, LSU, um, Jalen Cook, another game with five assists. That's now three games played, three games with at least five assists. Uh, he's the key for that LSU offense. Um, he, the whole thing's got to run through him. Everything's got to run through Jalen Cook. Um, but other than that, no big, no big takeaways. Uh, RJ Sunahara finally gets a twenty-minute game for Georgia. You know that now they have about three, six, seven, six, eight pieces there with with Sunahara, Melendez, and Abdul Rahim. Dangerous little wing wing uh, trio there for Georgia. Really good defensively. So I mean, hey, first time Blake, we've been able to just kind of run through and been like domination. I yeah, like I it. forgot to say I forgot to read the scores on Friday too. I, I can like we were talking before. I was like we don't even know what day it is right now. It's holiday season. Like you don't even know what day it is. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Friday it was Kentucky ninety six, Illinois State seventy, LSU ninety six, Northwestern State fifty five. But the Kentucky Illinois game, we said that was the or the Illinois State game. That was the Antonio Reeves revenge spot. He scored twenty seven points in that one. Went four of eight from three. The bigger story I thought was. Once again, Kentucky goes 11 of 25 from three, 44%. They're top three nationally in three-point percentage. Cal is, is not pulling anything back. Like, it is, let's just go ahead. Let's shoot the threes. We're good at it. We're making shots. They're getting good shots. Um, I thought it was just kind of your typical Kentucky performance in that one. Um, yeah, which, again, not a lot to know. That's, that's a good thing <laughs> because, right. you know, it's like when you don't have a lot to know, that means you're doing what you're supposed to do. And, Kentucky did that against Illinois State. But, yeah, I mean, I guess on Saturday, the only thing for me, you brought up the Vanderbilt point, which I was going to bring up again. Like, that's exactly what we said going in. We said it's just going to be those two guys are going to have to take over in games, and we'll see if that's good enough, you know, if that's enough to be able to to win games in SEC play because it's, you know, a little easier to do when you're playing teams that you should do that against. Um, yeah, I mean, South Carolina getting more of a depth – I think helps because we talked about them. Like I've kind of talked about their big four, which is probably unfair. I mean, there are more guys that are contributing, but we just focus in on those guys. Right. Having a little more depth in SEC play, we are going to have 77 free throw <laughs> type games. <laughs> um, you need that in SEC play. You do need, I mean, yeah, yeah, depth can't be undervalued in this league because I, I do think it's a situation where you're going to have, you know, fouling as usual. So, um, and lots of foul calls. So yeah, I mean, Auburn, we mentioned it. I mean, it's like, a lot of people have been saying, well, Auburn's not really played, you know, a tough schedule to this point. Comparing it to an Alabama or something like that, sure, it's not. But I, I said it before, like, they are just dominating their opponents. It, it doesn't matter kind of who they're playing right now. They are just taking it to them. Uh, and that's what you want to see. And remember, they've got the the extra non-conference game coming up on Tuesday. They're going to play Penn before they open in Arkansas. So, yeah, I thought that was, um, you know, another takeaway. So, good day for the SEC. Um, you know, like I said Missouri turned it on after that was a I think it was a three point game with five minutes left in the first half, and they turned it on from there. Um, so a lot of what you want to see from the SEC in Florida. Uh, once again, I, I go through everybody here. I mean, Florida scoring ninety seven, looking like the Florida team. I think that um, we knew they could be a lot of balance, a lot of scoring possibilities with this team. Um, so yeah, I really liked what I I saw from the, the Gators too, minus the free throw shooting. I think they. Yeah, like 17 to 29. They're just a bad free throw shooting team. And that could be an issue in some games this season. Um, so they're going to need to at least improve a little bit there. So, all right, we'll quickly run through the Sunday games because there weren't many of them, as we said, only two. But it was the Mississippi schools uh, in action. Mississippi State 85, Bethune-Cookman 62, and then Ole Miss uh, 95, Bryant 78. So Ole Miss stays unbeaten, Max. But I'm sorry for Ole Miss. The bigger story, uh, the other – Mississippi team in this one, Mississippi State, not just getting the win, but our guy, Tolu Smith, officially back in action. 
plays 19 minutes. What does this guy do? What does this guy do in 19 minutes? I know it's come on. I know it's but come on. He's a monster. He's a monster. Points, nine rebounds. He's a monster. Five of five, six of seven from the free throw line. Doesn't miss. Uh, I watched. I was like, my brother's watching Red Zone, and I'm like, turn it off right now. I Tolu Smith's about to go on the court. Turn the channel right now. This guy just changes things for this team. Just, just changes things. And I know that take nothing away from Kashawn Murphy and Jimmy Bell Jr. Very good, but. But Chris Jan said after the game, he said, I was surprised. He said the new guys just knew, get the ball to Tolu. They just knew, just get it to him. Um, I mean, this this is just, this is what we wanted to see. Uh, you know, and Jan's also said, he said, that Southern loss is not going to define this team. They know. They know everyone's talking about that game still, all the way back on December 3rd. They know. Um, and, and I like how you get Tolu Smith no restrictions, right? No minutes restriction. Full go at practice. They've been waiting to get him in for weeks now. Uh, and you get him that that little confidence boost game right before conference play, and then you hit the ground running. Uh, it was just – it's a great situation to have in, in Mississippi State right now. Yep, I think so too. And, again, that's a team that I don't think is probably getting enough love at this point. There's one point Mississippi State fans were unhappy where we had them in the power rankings, but that was several weeks ago, and um, I just think now – and like we said, it, we, we learn a lot more about this team with the first half of their SEC schedule for a second year in a row. It's just a brutal opening slate. I mm -hmm. think they'll fare much better than one and seven like they did last year. But um, yeah, so I, I a lot of upward momentum with this team right now, getting their best player back on the floor and just seeing how everyone else has kind of benefited, you know, and, and having to step into different roles. And now that you get him back, you know, everyone kind of adjusts. And um, yeah, I, I think they're going to, they're in a pretty interesting spot. Like I said, remember the first four SEC games at South Carolina, home against Tennessee, home against Alabama, at Kentucky. Like that is a tough four game stretch to start SEC play. And then from there, you got the Vanderbilt game, sandwich in the middle of home at Florida, home against Bama, at Ole Miss, at Alabama. So, um, oh, yeah, not easy for the Bulldogs. All right. Anything on the Rebels? I mean, just the usual. I mean, look, so, hey, since I said Ole Miss is going to win every game by 10 points or fewer. All they've done is gone out and won every game since then by like 17 or more. So they're figuring it out. <laughs> I mean, Bryant's not a bad squad. You know, they beat FAU. Yeah. Um, and they've got they got Timberlake and and some 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 good wings there. Um, but Ole Miss right now with this this eight man rotation that they've kind of solidified, they're just kind of finding their mold. Um Musa Sisa, I think, had four blocks in like 15 minutes. Um, and I, I was watching the game and the, and the commentator said like uh, geez, I don't know how many teams in the country can rotate top five shot blockers for top five shot blockers, you know, at both seven foot plus. And you're just, you're starting to see them get comfortable with that rotation. I'm not going to put too much weight into it. It was, it was Bryant at home. Uh, you got the biggest game of your biggest game of the season to date here, uh, going to Knoxville on Saturday. It's, we're going to learn pretty much everything we need to learn in that one. Yeah. Could you have ever, if before the season, I could have given you a thousand tries. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's too many. <laughs> Ever imagine that the final three teams that would be unbeaten in college basketball would be Houston, James Madison, and Ole Miss. Um, just wild, isn't it? Houston, you could have guessed, but just Houston wild. You could have guessed, but I mean, <clears throat> the others, I mean, I had no, I, James Madison wasn't even on my radar, and I, and I was probably highest on Ole Miss out of anybody in the country, and I still would have said, yeah, they'll probably drop one or two here in the non-conference, you know, new team getting going, but hey. Yeah, I may lose to Memphis basketball. or something like that, and yeah, yeah. that didn't happen. So, <laughs> this is interesting to think about, but yeah, big game. I'm telling you, I, I was discussing this with the, um, with Hoop Southbound, which I know uh, did yep. a great job on YouTube. You've been on the show with um david and maddie there but maddie. i yeah so i i did the show with them which i think comes out today actually um i said like it's so interesting how the first slate of sec games is set up because it is like a great prove it opportunity for multiple teams like prove that what you've done to this point you're for real right south carolina hosts mississippi state like mississippi state's got their best player back south carolina in a spot at home prove it like prove yep. that you're what you are right um, 
you know, it's the the Arkansas Auburn game is interesting for a lot of reasons. Auburn, you can go on the road and prove that everybody's talked about your schedule and all this and blah blah blah. You're playing an Arkansas team that, quite frankly, you've been better than for most of the season right now, and you get to go on the road and try to do that. Or Arkansas can prove it the other way and say, "All right, we're we figuring some things out. We're going to beat this Auburn team that's red hot." Ole Miss going to Tennessee, right? It's it's all right. Prove it. Like here's your chance. You you're on the the national radar now because you're 13 and 0. Now you got to go play the team that's probably the hardest team to play, um, just in terms of their their style and right. the way they play defense and those kind of things. And then even like a Kentucky Florida matchup. I was just going to say Kentucky team. Florida. Yeah, um, because we said Florida training in the right direction. Kentucky goes on the road, big first game uh, for this team. I mean, really the apologies to Louisville fans. The first true road game for Kentucky, and I'm not yep. counting the Louisville game as a true road game. I don't care that's played there. This is a little different than traditionally it has been. Um, so, you know, a lot at stake there, even, I mean, really the only two games I just can't really find much for Alabama at Vanderbilt, A&M hosting LSU, Georgia, Missouri too, because Georgia's a team, like yeah. we said, Georgia has won a lot of games here in a row and Missouri has had their issues. Um, so it's kind of a big one for both teams too. So we're going to preview all these games. We're going to make our picks, but man, this is an interesting setup for, for, for slate number one in SEC play. And that Georgia-Missouri game is extra interesting because those two teams, if you look at the analytics or power rankings, they're, they've they kind of been just notched up right next to each other for yeah. the whole non-conference. And that's kind of like a separation game, you know? Who's going to bump up above and who's going to sit back down on the bottom to start conference play? So that's a big game, too. Yep, it is. And again, we will preview it all. We'll make our picks. Uh, the picks officially begin now. Like, we've had fun Ooh. making our picks in conference play. We're keeping records now. We're going to start keeping up, um, picking every SEC game this season. So we'll have fun with that. And, uh, again, if you want uh, everything we're going to be doing SEC basketball-wise and conference play, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button as well. Check out all of our SEC football stuff, all of our bowl reaction. Of course, we've got college football playoff, Alabama, Michigan. Uh, we'll have thoughts on that uh, as well. So check out everything on the channel and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So – we thank you guys, as always, for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you again here soon at Southeastern 14, presented by Bet Online.